Hello everyone, my name is Tara Bruner. I am here to talk about Ask the Insider. I'm going to um, invite our special guest today. Uh, we're going to talk today about mental health and allergies. We're in the season of, you know, going places. The holidays. And so we really want to take some time to talk about how mental health plays a role in food allergies. And so um, I'm Tara Bruner. I am a practicing physician assistant and I, in primary care, but I also work at Thermo Fisher Scientific as a, a clinical educator, meaning I speak to all things allergy and autoimmune related as it, as it pertains to some diagnostic testing. But today is, is really exciting to be able to share with you some insight about mental health and food allergy. So I want to welcome Jenna. It's a pleasure to have you here with us today. So Jenna, I would love for you to just give us an introduction, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do. Thank you so much, Tara. I'm so happy to be here. Um, yeah, my name is Jenna. I am a therapist. I'm an associate clinical social worker and I'm based in Los Angeles and I specialize in working with uh, folks with chronic illnesses and specifically food allergies and asthma. That's a really tight niche to be in, but so important for people who suffer from allergies, specific, specifically food allergies, because it does, it ties into so many aspects of your life. So tell me a little bit about where, what got you to this point and, and what this kind of looks like when you're with your clinical practice or your, your uh, mental health practice. Yeah. So I was born with anaphylactic food allergies um, and managing that throughout my life, you know, going throughout childhood, uh, just dealing with the different challenges that managing food allergies brings. Um, I had firsthand experience of the sorts of, you know, social anxiety, just overall hypervigilance and at times social isolation mm -hmm. that it can bring. And moving into college, I experienced a real challenge there of, oh man, I have to manage these on my own for the first time. Um, so it kind of just felt like a natural passion with my you know, interest in mental health and psychology. And uh, yeah, so now I am a therapist and I specialize in working with folks with food allergies. And in my clinical practice, that often looks like you know, working with uh, parents with uh, children with food allergies. Oftentimes it's a lot of psychoeducation for the parents, working with the allergists as well mm. um, to make sure that we're all on the same page and then um, helping parents to be able to manage the anxiety that um, managing food allergies brings. And it also involves working with the children as well, if maybe um, the kiddo with the allergy is struggling to manage it and um, empowering them and helping them to be their own allergy advocate. So a, a huge resource for not just the patient or the, the the one affected with food allergies but you're right the whole world around them the parents i mean how many parents fear letting their kids just go to a birthday party or taking them to school or daycare or even um what what does an allergist look like what are they going to do and what's that what's that challenge if they choose to do some type of of concerning test to make sure that this is or is not an allergy so really good work i want to pause for a moment and just say this is interactive we do have a chat feature and i want to make sure that if anybody has any that's listening today has any questions or even listening to the recording let us you know see your, what your questions are so we can have that discussion because this is this is kind of a small area to talk about so before we jump into some of some of our dialogue today i want to ask Okay, so maybe somebody's thinking, how can I have access to this? Is this, a, you know, you're in, you're in LA area. Is this accessible in somewhere like Arkansas or, you know, some other place? So tell us about the resources that, that may be available out there. Yeah, definitely. So as you said, this is still an emerging niche in the mental health field. Um, I would say there's still like a lot of education uh, that right. needs to be done even among therapists, 
But uh, it's really exciting. Um, Tamara Hubbard, she is the creator of the Food Allergy uh, Counseling Directory. And so she has this awesome uh, directory at the foodallergycounseling.org where um, you can search by state and see different um, therapists that identify as being allergy informed. So that's really awesome. Um, and another way to kind of search for that might be going on Psychology Today and searching for maybe therapists who specialize in food allergies and seeing who comes up there. So yeah. even if you're not in California, there are resources. Well, even so much as, you know, I thought, okay, I would like to know what that looks like around Arkansas where I, I reside. And I was able to find, to go on foodallergycounseling.org and type in my area of location and find virtual we're in the we're in the world of virtual opportunities so there even though it may not be uh localized to your area but that virtual is a very um realistic option for maybe some of this counseling for food allergies and and really at this time of year we just came through halloween which we we discussed on our last instagram live about trick-or-treating and and being vigilant now we're really talking about how do i go to grandma's house and tell grandma i can't eat that when Grandma's probably going to get offended. So I would like to know, just in a, in your life, in your experience, what's a what's a story? What's a what's an example of a a patient that you've walked this journey with through counseling? Oh yeah, um, what comes to mind is I worked with a, a teenager who was in high school and um, really hadn't had many issues managing their allergy um, up until that point later in high school where they were, you know, dealing with going out to dinner with friends and more of these so come up um, um, that were triggering some anxiety with managing the allergy on their own and communicating that to others. Um, and additionally, they had just gotten into college. So it was also this added factor of, you know, anticipatory anxiety about college. How am I going to do that? And so uh, really we were able to um, with with their parent and friends as well, like create situations that started, you know, from least anxiety inducing to gradually over time more anxiety inducing um, to allow them to practice these social skills and practice really role playing using scripts that we would create in session. Mm -hmm. um, what does that communication look like? What does that allergy advocacy look like? And also over time, helping them to challenge some negative core beliefs that they may have developed about themselves, mm -hmm. like I am a burden. Right. So um, we were able to get them to the point where they felt much more confident and uh, they were able to feel empowered and go to college away, out, away from their parents out of state, which was really exciting. So what a healthy way, healthy way to, to kind of, you know, expand, get out of the, the mom and dad world into this is what reality is. And, and I find that so interesting. You know, we think about the, the practical, like going out to eat, but really it's that social you know, like you said, a negative core belief. I'm a burden. I don't want to go when others may not see it as that, you know, so um, an example might be if we were to go out to eat with somebody and they were in a wheelchair, we would accommodate with any, any situation sitting at that particular place and accommodating them, however it be, may be. But just because you don't see that or know that disability or, or condition, that that you know this negative belief that oh i don't want to burden anybody just just having that training that walking through with somebody who who has this guidance to say this is what you need to say and you need to advocate for yourself so i think empowering those patients to to own their the disease and, and be um vocal about it in in a in a positive manner so uh, other other areas that you might um fine, not just social situations, but what other areas have you had worked through with patients or, or clients such as, um, you know, maybe they, maybe they don't understand that what the allergist does, because I will say, I don't know a whole lot of allergists who have this within their entire, you know, they have, they may have nutritionists or dietitians, but not this end of it. So again, you might not get this resource through your allergist, but what can you, what can you tell us about counseling people through the allergist um, plan of action. Yeah. 
So you're absolutely right. Um, I think that there's still a, a gap that needs to be filled in the care team in terms of like a mental health uh, professional being, you know, tied into the allergist office. But uh, yeah, so a lot of times that's not something that's there. And so um, there's a lot of anxiety that can come up among um, these appointments where you're getting allergy tested mm -hmm. or maybe you're undergoing something like oral immunotherapy or another type of treatment um, that can be quite anxiety inducing for both, you know, par parent and the patient, um, as, as well as sometimes people are having symptoms and they don't even know if they have an allergy or what right. they're allergic to. And so they might not even be linked to an allergist yet and just be really, really afraid to eat or do certain things. And so that's when, you know, as a therapist, if someone's coming to me like that, that's when I really want to help get them to connected with one of the allergists that I trust and help them to see, okay, what am I actually allergic to if I have an allergy or maybe it's something else? Because that gives us an important baseline to understand what's going on and then how can we support them. You bring up such a good point of, you know, um, people fearful. If they have an adverse food reaction, they automatically think it's an allergy or is this an allergy? I need to have complete avoidance and, and that can cause confusion especially when you know when you're going into college and you need to you need to make sure you have the right meal plan or, or you have these tools available diagnosis is important and so is an adverse food reaction only allergy or ige mediated is what we say in medical terms not always there's other things such as an intolerance you know sometimes it's like lactose intolerance or, or other things so again, really understanding, using the tools that, that medical providers have, the diagnosis, even so much as, as a, a really good allergist who will help you get those answers. Uh, even your primary care can do some testing, but those allergists can do something called an oral food challenge, which can be very fearful. If you have had an adverse or a poor response to food, you can have a lot of anxiety going into that that discussion is or or even that appointment is that true i i don't suffer is that true absolutely i mean i see there's there's certain triggers and diagnosis and oral food challenges right. starting a new treatment starting a new medication trying a new food starting school a major life transition like these are all major triggers yeah. for allergy anxiety yeah what a great area of medicine that you're in to really to really make this practical and, and living the lifestyle, a normal lifestyle with caution that you are walking people through so much as, you know, I'm about to go on a date and this person doesn't understand this yet. How can I have that conversation? Or how do I address grandma and tell her, I really want to eat that, but I, I physically cannot, it's not out of disrespect. So um, man, the discussion that you can bring and that guidance, um, and that negative, really, this is not you. This is just the situation at hand that everybody can walk through together if handled well. Um, so coordinating that care is something that, um, again, it's the foodallergycounseling.org. Again, if you want to head to that resource and, and then really help navigating um, through this process. I want to just check the, the chat here and see if there were any questions. So... There's been no questions yet, but I do hope that, that anybody watching shares this with any family member or any friend that might be dealing with, um, how do I even, how do I even go through navigating a food allergy? The resources is, is mental health has these resources that you can, you provide, which um, again, for those listeners, just, just kind of say, what's that terminology I need to ask for? So what is your title again? Yeah, so I am a therapist. I'm an associate clinical social worker. Um, if you are someone who feels like you might need some mental health support mm -hmm. navigating food allergies, I would either search or ask for, you know, a therapist who specializes in allergy anxiety or food allergies. You could also look for a psychologist, um, marriage family therapist, social workers, uh, 
LPCC's clinical, uh, clinical counselors, licensed professional clinical counselors, we're all uh, therapists. So I would yeah. search for either counselors or therapists, um, psychologists uh, to address the allergies. Right. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a little plug in. So you're the food allergy therapist. That's your handle for Instagram. Again, you put some resources out there of what this looks like. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, yes, the food allergy therapist. Um, I actually really exciting in 2025. So in the new year, um, I'm going to be running some exciting virtual groups. Um, I run nice. a I run a 10 week series uh, for food allergy parents. It's called Surviving to Thriving, and we just wrapped last week. So I'll be restarting that uh, in the new year to focus on managing caregiver anxiety. And I'll also be doing um, some support groups that will be open to folks in all 50 states uh, for folks with allergies and parents uh, of children with allergies, as well as I offer individual and family therapy virtually across the state of California um, and in person in uh, Los Angeles and in Hermosa Beach. Yeah, I, I, there's, there's a member who said I just loved it. Amazing food allergy parent group. So again, this resource needs to be spread you know you know mental health is so important but even in certain navigating food allergies so you know i think i think this awareness has in this conversation has made me more aware as i work in the allergy space that this is available um we're going to go ahead and wrap it but is there anything else that you would like to to add um you know maybe a, t a tip to get through the holiday season yeah I know that navigating the holidays, especially with family members, it can be stressful and anxiety inducing. So just something to keep in mind is focusing on the facts and kind of having a united front as a family, you know, maybe one spokesperson for the family who has just like a list of facts that you can stick to and trying to go into situations with a solution focused mindset. Like how, how can we make this work rather than can I go to this? Can I do this? Like how can we make that happen? Um, because we want inclusion, not exclusion or avoidance. Great words. Great tips. Again, Jenna, such a valuable conversation. I want to thank you for joining Ask the Insider as we talk about mental health and food allergies. But again, we want to wish everybody out there a happy um, holiday season. And again, continue to follow Allergy Insider as well as the Food Allergy Therapist for more information. But again, thank you for joining. And again, thank you, Jenna. Thank you so much, Tara. Happy holidays. Right. Thanks. Bye-bye.